All this is Dr. Mobin Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So today we have a stellar guest with us. And this, uh, the topic today with her, the masks. And I think all of us know that we've been talking a lot about masks. Some, some of us believe that masks are not valuable, not useful. Some of us think that we actually do not know how to use them. Some feel like me that masks are very valuable. So we have someone here who is so passionate about masks and has so many important tips and tricks to use the mask, to make the mask, to use them and to, to give benefit to yourself and others. So just very quickly, I want to share my screen and show you her web channel as well. Her name is Sandy. So this is drbean.com. And here is Sandy's website, uh, YouTube channel as well. And here she has started. She was just mentioning that she started this year, the, the last year. And because we had pandemic as well, so she just took on the activity of helping us understand about the masks. We'll see uh, how the channel progresses further as uh, the pandemic winds down. So Sandy, welcome. Thank you. you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me and happy birthday to Dr. Bean. So everybody needs to know it's your birthday. Thank you. Yeah, so I am a nurse anesthetist by background and training. I've been a nurse anesthetist for 30 years now, uh, a little more. I graduated uh, from Columbia University for my undergraduate work. I did my graduate work in anesthesia training in Minneapolis, St. Paul at Abbott Northwestern Hospital and St. Mary's University's graduate program. Uh, after that, I returned to New York. I practiced at NYU, which is now NYU Langone Medical Center for several years. And about five years in, I moved, relocated with my then new budding family. And I founded my own practice and I developed a specialty in what at the time was very new in narrow specialty, single specialty outpatient settings. Got it. So thank you very much, Sandy. And once again, welcome. We are here, a number of us, uh, we are Cool Beans Tribe, about a million people now uh, across our social media networks. So once again, welcome from all of us. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. uh, so masks are something that we have so many questions and we have so many objections and we have so many proponents and opponents and all that. So why don't we start with this? You have been very passionate about what is the right mask what is the right way of the construction of a mask? How should it be fit? So can you, the layers, and can you tell us a little bit about masks, the layers, the material, how do you see it? Sure. Yeah, so I started just quite by accident reviewing masks because when you work in an operating room setting like me, you're wearing masks all the time and you realize you, you've you learned a lot that you, you're not even aware how much you've learned, right? After so many years. So I realized how the public at large doesn't know anything about them. So what do you wear? Remember people were talking about bandanas and I developed over time what I call a mask continuum. So I categorized, there's different kinds of masks. And for the purpose of our discussion today, I think we're talking about fabric masks and I developed some criteria for fabric masks and partly by looking at some of the literature that was coming out of the WHO, uh, the World Health Organization, the CDC is not anywhere near there yet. The CDC is nowhere near. But I came up with some criteria and basically what they consist of is a, a mask should be at least three layers of fabric. The fabric should be, call, um, should be hypo, hydrophobic on the outer layer, meaning water resistant. So a drop of water should beat up and roll off on the outside. And that will repel respiratory droplets coming from somebody else. The innermost layer next to your face should be moisture wicking. And the middle layer should be, depending on who you read, could be any number of things. I developed in my criteria polypropylene. I'm gonna expand on that in a moment. The other thing is a mask should have no valves, no expiratory valves. Masks with valves are aimed at pollution, things like that. They're not really made with pandemic in mind and can put people around you at risk. So no valves, a good fit, which is nuanced. And I have some tricks on how to make things fit 
and how to customize the fit of masks. As for the middle layer, at least one layer of polypropylene, it's because fabrics, early on when I was researching fabrics, I saw they are scored with something called a Q factor. Hmm. And a Q factor is a number that's meant to reconcile breathability and filtration. So the more breathable, the less filtering, the more filtering, the less breathable. And there's a number there to score fabrics and reconcile that. Well, polypropylene, which I've been wearing in a surgical mask for years, has a Q value of 17. At the time, the WHO said pick anything over three. The second best was cotton at seven. So I decided early on to limit my search to polypropylene. I'm, I'm glad to say the WHO is now recommending polypropylene as well, and the CDC not yet. And so the, the number, if that is larger, that is better, or the number smaller is better? Which one? Higher is better. Anything over three is what they originally said. But polypropylene at 17, I think, should be the standard. So yes. Got it. Got it. So, so three layers, middle layer polypropylene, and then outer layer, outward layer hydrophobic. So it prevents moisture and wet things to come towards us. Right. And inner layer, you said moisture wick. So it should be able to pick up the moisture which is coming from our mouth. Correct. Right. So one question that I have very often, and I'm going to, uh, while we are discussing your criteria as well, I'm going to ask some of the questions that Cool Beans have been asking or they have been leaving in comments under the various videos. And once again, if you are a pro mask, you are welcome here. If you do not like masks, still you are welcome here. And we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. I will be fully, full, full disclosure, I am pro mask. And Sandy, I think that you uh, are proponent for mask as well. That's why you are here, correct? Okay, so tell me this. Uh, I have heard this many times that masks actually do not prevent the movement of the virus because this virus is so small? So that's actually a really good question. And that's where the polypropylene becomes very important because people think of filtration in a mask as something like pasta in a colander. Hmm. So if you want to drain pasta after you're done cooking it, as long as the pasta is larger than the holes in the colander, the water will go through and the pasta will remain behind. And people think of filtration like that. So if the pasta or the virus is smaller than the holes, what's the purpose of wearing this mask? Well, filtration with polypropylene is not exactly like that. Polypropylene isn't like holes. Polypropylene forms more of a thicket. And it's, it's just bands of twisting fibers that form thickets and filaments around each other. And they're all tangled up if you look at it un under magnification. And when aerosols or what we call small particles are drawn in through inhaling, there's a very random pattern. They're bouncing around, the air is moving in all these random patterns. And what happens is they bump into those thickets and they get stuck to them. And that's why you, you read about filtration, it'll say 95% of particles at this size or 98% of particles, but not 100 because it, there's a bit of a random motion there. And that, that's, that's why polypropylene is so important if you want to enhance filtration. Got it. So um, it's not just the size of the holes in, the, in the, the material. It is really the weaving of the material and the electromagnetic forces of the material and the way the fibers are going and then the movement of the, the particle themselves. They all work together to stop a particle from just going across them. That's correct. And, and depending on who you read, and most of the studies done on influenza virus, even uh, I have like a plain old surgical mask here, this flimsy surgical mask, probably just in and of itself, around 75% of small particles will be trapped in, in the polypropylene in there. Got it. And, and just if you give me one quick second, my apologies for this uh, detour. I am seeing, so you broke the news that today is my birthday. So I'm seeing a lot of folks uh, sending the happy birthday. So thank you very much. It looks rude for me not to respond and, uh, and acknowledge that um, there are so many birthday wishes. So thank you very much. Um, today is my birthday. 
and my uh, discussion with the family was that I wanted to do the talk today. And so we did eat some cake before the talk so that nobody is waiting. And then after the talk, we'll once again celebrate. So I might skip the chit chat today if that is OK. But uh, we'll continue with our discussion. So Sandy, once again, thank you very much. And apologies for this quick, quick detour. Thank you, everyone, for your wishes. Now, continuing, the second thing that I've heard a lot, and that is that somehow masks will trap carbon dioxide here, and they will make me rebreathe my carbon dioxide that I'm trying to exhale, and it's going to go back in, and it's going to cause harm. Uh, what is the situation there? Right. So it's funny because you hear that that's the same uh, concern. But you also hear the concern you just mentioned, which is that the viral particles are too small. So if 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 the viral particles, what, you know what I'm saying? The, the carbon dioxide wouldn't be trapped if the viral particles can't be trapped. But that's a bit of a diversion. Uh, the carbon dioxide is not built up in a mask. There is some carbon dioxide build up in a respirator, still not dangerous. People do use these in workplaces and things. But I have actually seen demonstrations, and I think a lot of people nowadays own um, the pulse oximeter, which you can put on your finger. I've seen demonstrations where you have a pulse oximeter and also an end tidal, which is a carbon dioxide probe. You can put it inside the mask. These have been tested. You can put three masks on, and you will see that you do not become hypercarbic. Is your carbon dioxide a bit higher than it was without the mask, perhaps, but there is a range of normal carbon dioxide. And as long as you're in a normal range, you are safe. I, I can tell you, we wear these all day in the operating room. Uh, I've been wearing a mask now for 30 days all day. So uh, carbon dioxide does not really build up. Got it, got it. So then uh, another interesting question that has been very frequently asked. And there has been lately a video on Twitter going around as well on social media where somebody was wearing a mask and that this is cold and they are breathing and, and there are, you know, the vapors, you can see them ejecting from all the sides of the mask. And they're saying, well, look, I am breathing and the vapors are everywhere. So what is really this mask doing? So I have two questions there. Number one, is the mask still filtering the particles that it should fil filter? And number two, isn't the normal breath has to go out somehow? So is this, is this a fit problem or this is normal? So two questions. One, those vapors that we are seeing coming out from everywhere, do they contain the particles, virus particles? And secondly, is this wrong? Was that a fit problem or that is how masks work? Okay, so that's a really good question. And it depends is the answer, I think. Uh, first of all, masks are not respirators. So a mask, we always talk about getting a good fit. I try to avoid the word seal because that's the difference between a mask and a respirator. So a mask not being sealed always has some leak, always. And that's why it becomes very important if you look at the filtration. Sometimes a manufacturer will say, oh, this one filters 0 0.3 mic micron particles. This mask filters 0.1 micron size particles. You get down to too small a particle size. The mask itself creates resistance. And of course, since it's not sealed, you will be actually forcing some leak around the mask. And nobody knows where that sweet spot is exactly. But it's important that you know that the smaller the micron size filtration you want out of the mask, the more important the fit becomes so that it's sealed. Now, there is also condensation that comes out, and that has to do with temperature difference between what's inside the mask and what's outside the mask, and that's one of the reasons we see fogging with the glasses. So some of that you're going to see depending on the temperature difference uh, when you're walking around outside. If it's freezing cold and here right next to you, you're keeping all this humidity, and some of that will escape. If it escapes, yes, probably some. Uh, if you have some aerosol, some might escape. But... I will say that one of the benefits of wearing a mask is that it discourages the generation of aerosols, even just having a mask in front of your face, because what gives rise to aerosols, it's when a small respiratory droplet comes out 
and in dry air can evaporate its shell and is now left dancing around in the air. That's an aerosol. But when the air is left next to you for just a second after you exhale, it pools for a moment. It is too humid for that air to form aerosols. So just having the mask there, even if you have some leak, discourages the formation of aerosols. I hope that answers the question. Got it. Makes sense. So then I have one more question. And I have actually so many questions. Even now when I'm looking at uh, the comments here. And guys, when I'm looking straight in the camera, that is fine. But sometimes I go and look at the comments too. And that is when I'm looking this way. Um, in the comments here, I'm seeing as well. Is mask some sort of a conspiracy? Is Do we become a sheep if we wear mask? And I want to tell you, a, a, this is my birthday, so I can get a little bit of a leeway today. Um, in our home, there is a tradition that whoever has the birthday, that person is the king for that day. And oh, whatever yeah. they say has to be done because they are the king. So I have been ordering around my family since the morning some good things, some not fun things for them. So uh, if I can get some time here, somebody had left a comment. This is the cutest insert that somebody has done for me on, on YouTube. There are lots of ways people insert me. But one of them was, Dr. Mubeen, you are a sheep. When I have to sleep, I count you. <laughs> you know, the counting the sheeps for sleeping. <laughs> so they said, I count you when I have to sleep. So that I thought that was very cute. So question for you, is mask some sort of a conspiracy? Is it a sheep behavior of ours that we are just blindly listening to some authorities? What is the truth there? What, what do you think? Well, clearly I don't. I, I'm using a mask. Uh, I'm a proponent of masks in the face of the pandemic. Hmm. I do recognize that on a broader scope, a mask is not the answer. To We have many different facets of how we address this pandemic. We have vaccines. We have therapeutics. I also think that some of the aerosol issue speaks to other mitigation measures like distancing and opening windows and having good ventilation. So I'm not expecting too much out of any one mask. But that said, I think that every measure of responsibility that we can take is one more life saved and one less person ill. And uh, I feel that I've seen enough data to satisfy me just in terms of testing with particles in various kinds of masks with various kinds of materials that I think they are worth wearing. I also think that a mask is very benign. And given the fact that it's a benign measure that might help, you know, even if you're not convinced it helps, if it's not going to hurt and it might help, then to my mind, it's more conscientious to wear it. That's my assessment. Got it. Got it. And even now, again, there is a cool bean here. For example, uh, Brian. Brian is saying you are lying or he is saying it's a sheep behavior. And that's fine. Again, I have never during this pandemic criticized anyone to say because of your belief, you should not be here. But at the same time, uh, th these are the kind of things that, that pop up. I have a couple of more questions. So before we go to the uh, next part of your discussion, uh, the issue with breathing. Many folks say that, hey, mask actually cause breathing issue. I just cannot mm -hmm. have a mask. I have medical conditions. So right. what have you come across in terms of those folks do asthmatics, for example? Should they wear a mask or should they not? COPD patients, should they wear a mask or not? What is their cost benefit analysis? So it's interesting. That's a few questions in one. And I've given a lot of thought to that because I've had people contact me on my channel and say these like, and sometimes it's, I have anxiety and that's real. I'm not going to discount anxiety. It's real. And it's hard to have something. I don't know what that's like because I don't suffer with that, but I believe it. As far as respiratory issues, I will point to um, the former Surgeon General of the United States, Jerome Adams, is a practicing anesthesiologist who also has pulmonary disease. And so he wears a mask every day in the operating room when he goes to work. I work with people. We are in the operating room. We're a cross-section of the rest of the population, and people do have pulmonary disease or other problems, and it's not dangerous to be wearing a mask. Now, as for the feeling, however, 
I have offered some tips for people. I think sometimes people feel they can't breathe. That's a feeling. If you look at the empirical data, like their oxygen saturation on their fingertip, they're breathing fine, but they feel they're not breathing fine. And that's where I wonder if that's an anxiety. And I think there are some suggestions, this is a little beyond my expertise, but I have made suggestions like, perhaps you can wear a mask if just to get started, wear it for a short time in your home. Wear it when you're doing something you really enjoy, like you're watching your favorite movie, something quiet, nothing too active. Wear it when you're sucking on a piece of hard candy that you enjoy, maybe get the feelings mixed up a little bit. And some people are not going to like um, what I have to say next. I, I do feel that in the end of the day, even though I take this seriously and I don't discount anybody's pain or hardship, I think that not wearing a mask because of that falls into a category that I call, I'm willing to make my problem your problem. And I, I think that a time like this, it's better to we have to think in terms of our neighbors and our fellow man right now. So I don't feel that it should give you the right to put somebody else at risk. That's my, I know some people are going to be upset with me for saying that, but that's, I've given that a lot of thought and that's where I am. Got it. Got it. Makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to have some of the questions from the cool beans here as well. Questions and comments. Before that, I wanted to share my own experience. So I'm a pro mask. I always wear mask and uh, I'm comfortable with it. Um, when I was going to medical school and we'll go to surgical wards, I'll wear masks. When, when we'll practice, I'll wear masks. So no problems. But uh, once we were visiting Egypt, and we went into the the big pyramid and th there was they had opened that day the pyramid to go in the chambers and uh, we went in the chambers my family members were really excited the the place the the tiny pathway was really i think 2 feet by 2 feet mm -hmm. and so you have to kind of crouch and go in and then when you go in it is a big big um, hiatus a big chamber there but i became so claustrophobic mm -hmm. in that tunnel which was 100 150 feet long that even when we i reached the atrium i wanted to go back and that was the only one time i had that panic attack that i am stuck and a few days ago i was walking and i wear a mask although i know that during the walk it is actually okay because you are dispersing your breath very quickly and there is flowing air, but still I wore a mask so that others are comfortable. And I felt that anxiety. Mm -hmm. And I had to step away from the path and I had to remove my mask and breathe a little bit and then wear it again. Although there was no oxygen issues, it was just my anxiety. So I have actually uh, felt that myself as well, that this can happen. But that is a, to me, it seemed like a psychological part. It was not a physiological issue because I was generally fine. Mm -hmm. So it can happen in some cases. Oh, sure. Got it. So uh, let's start with some questions. So here we have cool beans. So let's see. So Denise says that I wear a mask while walking to Doc. Very good. Thank you. Uh, so if you have any questions, can you please put the letter Q there? I saw a question a few seconds ago. Uh, so let's see. Joseph says, what is the survivable percent on COVID-19? So let's keep it with the mask. Um, uh, let's see. Doug says, Jenna, so I think there's a side discussion going on as well. When I, when I wore mask, they blew so much into my eyes. So this is also a very interesting thing that when you're wearing a mask, it just keeps throwing all the air in the eyes and fogs the grass, glasses. What is the issue there? So like I said, any mask is going to have some leak. It's not a respirator, so it's not completely fitted. There are different styles that will contribute to better fit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, most masks now have the nose piece like this has a metal nose piece in it. But some masks have longer nose pieces than others. And what I have found is the ones that have longer nose pieces that go out to the cheekbone 
ideally really to the outer corner of the eyes. You can first mold it around the nose, then you can apply a little counter pressure and mold the rest of it around the cheekbone to approximate a better fit. The other thing that often is happening when you have too much fogging is you're using ear loops, and this has been studied. Head straps are better than ear loops. They provide a more secure fit because they provide some tension upwards instead of backwards. There are head strap hacks you can buy, and the important thing with those is they're, they're what a head strap hack is, it's like this, it's a band that connects the two ear loops to make the mask fit more like it's a head strap mask. The important thing with those is not to put them really behind your head, but to put them up high. So you have some of the tension coming up this way and see if you can't get a better fit that way. Got it. So, so I guess, Jenna, this is a <clears throat> question for you as well, the answer for you as well. Uh, I see here Eugene saying that I'm not being selfish. I took the time to learn about the topic. Mask wearing for the general public is not effective and does more harm. Again, uh, I'm not going to sit here and confront folks. Uh, if there is a question, that would be really great. Great. I do want to quickly say hi to Japan. Japan, hi. How are you doing? Saw you after a long time. Uh, I saw a question from Samina over here for three cotton layer. Are there cotton layer masks? Oh, definitely. In fact, if you check with the CDC, a fabric mask can consist of two layers of 100% cotton, all woven material, unlike a non-woven polypropylene. Yeah, there are. You'd be shocked how few masks meet the criteria I just laid out. I can count on one hand. Got it. Got it. Iman Mamoon says, Dr. Mubin, what about having good ventilation with such a cold weather? So masks are designed to be breathable. And again, it, I think it feels like you don't have good ventilation largely because you get some heat buildup by your face because your exhalant is warm and it's moist. Mm -hmm. But air does diffuse back and forth through a mask, whether it's cold or hot outside. Got I it. would make the argument that I'd rather wear a mask in the cold than in the heat, actually. <laughs> Just to be for the warmth. So ZigZag yeah. says, I doubled cotton masks, still good? So as I said, I, I mean, certainly more, if you're not going to use a non-woven like polypropylene, then more layers is better and tightly woven is better than loosely woven. But I feel very strongly after all that I've done and studied now that polypropylene is king and fit is king. And I, I think that if you're going to go to the trouble of wearing a mask, you should get the polypropylene in it because it also provides you some protection. Got it. And and share here, she's a cool bean. And her comment, South Korea thought we were not in the beginning for not wearing masks. I think they know. Uh, that is correct. So uh, share, and I don't know, Sandy, if you watch that video as well, where the head of the COVID response team, uh, he said that our biggest weapon is masks. And he said, I was, so this was in the beginning of the pandemic. And he said, I'm surprised that Europe and US are not doing it. And he said, if we don't do it, it's going to spread. And then it did spread here. And he said in South Korea, their biggest way of trying to fix this was masks. Is that, do masks have that kind of an effect? So if everybody masked up and let's say good quality mask, would that help? I believe so. Uh, yes, depending on the quality, I don't think if everybody put on cotton bandanas, we would have a great result. But yes, uh, if we stop wearing masks under our noses, I think that would help a lot too. If you've ever seen a video like simulation of the exhaled respiratory droplets and their patterns, it's it's huge coming from the nose. So yes, I think that if we all wore better masks, good masks. I don't think it's about the numbers. I know right now it's all the rage to talk about double masking. I don't have a quarrel with double masking if it's enhancing your fit and enhancing your filtration. But I don't, <laughs> there's your cat. My apologies. About is here. <laughs> apologies, please. Luffy is a little <laughs> less behaved. He has to chime in whenever he wants. <laughs> so we'll have to continue with Luffy. Okay. Hmm. What about a cotton three layer? Same thing. I, I think if you're going to just use cotton, three is better than two. 
a tight weave is better than a loose weave, but I would urge you to try some polypropylene. Got it, got it. Got it. So uh, there was a question here. Joseph says, can we ask about PM 2.5 filter masks? Uh, I have not heard of the PM 2.5 filter mask. Have you? That, so there that are yeah. filters that I generally stay away from masks that have the reusable, the, not the reusable, the disposable filters that you have to keep changing because first mm -hmm. of all, there's no good guidance on when one is done. When is it done? When, I, when can I, when do I have to, is it once a day, once a week? And, you know, in terms of their particle size, if this one says that's 2.5 micron particle size sounds acceptable, but the, the filter is always smaller than the mask because it has to fit inside the mask. So now you actually, even inside the mask, have some leaking on, on the edges where the filter doesn't reach. So I don't have a lot of experience with those kinds of masks, just for many reasons, I, I try to just stay away from the disposable, changeable filters. Got it. Got it. So uh, it's my birthday, and Luffy just came in for a few seconds and and started getting his cat clips as well. So sorry. So this is a Luffy is a celebrity amongst us. Uh, Art Ninjaok says, which side of mask is worn towards skin? White side or blue side of the mask? The white side goes toward the skin. Now, I don't know if it really matters if you open this up, the front and the very back seem very similar, but the color goes out. Got I, thought it. I, go, I saw something go by about an KN95 or N95, but it's gone. So let's see. So yeah, that's what happens. Sometimes the, the questions are just scrolling past us. So let's see, there's a question from uh, Jesse Bunker. What do you think the future of mask wearing will be over the course of 2021? So I think if I elaborate a little bit, once we have vaccinations and some people have gotten the infection and they recovered, do we still wear masks if I have been vaccinated? Yeah, that's a, that's a hard one. I, first of all, I'm, I don't wanna make any um, speculation about you know what it's gonna look like, how long it's gonna take until we start to achieve herd immunity. My understanding is that the guidance is that you still wear the mask now, even though you're vaccinated. Uh, the vaccines are not 100%. And depending on what the infection rate is, so if the infection rate is very high and you're 95% protected, that's a different equation, right, than if the, then once the infection rate is very low and you're 95% protected. So for now, Yes, the recommendation is to continue wearing a mask. I also just think from a humanitarian perspective, you know, I've been vaccinated and the infection rate near me is not so high anymore. Um, but, you know, people see me coming, they don't know I've been vaccinated, right? It's just kind of like having a valve there. I think that's scary to people. Uh, I think that for right now, it's just easier if we keep it simple. I think we're having enough trouble with, <laughs> with that. And that would be, if I had my way, I would say we should just wear masks a while longer. We're in the home stretch. Let's get vaccinated. Makes sense. We are almost there. Um, this is a very good question. Emily Wigan says, how often should masks be washed? Right. So it depends on the mask. So if some masks have some high-tech antimicrobial in the textiles, and then those can be only wash like maybe once a week because you're just washing it to get rid of dead skin cell buildup and debris. But this is going to be very sobering for people. Um, this has been studied, you know, we've talked about, or you've talked about, I think, how long can something like viral particles remain active on surfaces like stainless steel is a few days and cardboards a day. What do you think about a surgical mask? This plain old surgical mask, seven days. So this is polypropylene masks, probably about seven days. This is cotton poly blend, it's a few days. So I think the best thing to do is, if, first of all, the more you wash them, as soon as you start washing them, the polypropylene will begin to break down over some time. Some of the better manufacturers will tell you that they've tested. So this mask they know is still working the way it was after 10 washes or 15 washes or something like that. So it gives you some sense doesn't mean it's done in 11 washes. It just means that's as long as they've tested it. So if you are wearing, if you only have one of something like this that doesn't have a high-tech textile in it, you're going to have to wash it every day. 
unless you're only wearing it for a few minutes or so. So it's better to have several of them. You can put it aside then, unless you were wearing it in a very dirty area, you can put it aside, put it in a paper bag or put it somewhere in the sun and wear a different one the next day and rotate them so that you can cut down on how much washing. I also think that because they have this hydrophobic, this water resistant layer on the outside, it's easy to see when they start to break down because after you've done washing it and it's hung to dry, check it, flick a little bit of water on the outside and see if it still beads up and rolls off. If it doesn't anymore, then you know that layer is breaking down. Very good, I love that, thank you very much. One more question here from Samina. Please comment on KN95 masks. Okay, so first of all, I like that you called that a mask because you know that I think most people think of that as a respirator and respirators are a whole different discussion. I'm personally not wearing respirators these days, but a KN95 is the Chinese standard. So people think of it as the equivalent of the American N95. The problem with the KN95 is that in the United States, it would not be considered a respirator because it would not stand up to the testing that we demand out of our respirators. So there are two reasons for this. One is inspiratory leak. So in the United States, an N95 can have zero inspiratory leak. A KN95 by the Chinese standard can have as much as 8% inspiratory leak. And the whole reason you're wearing a respirator is because you want to eliminate inspiratory leak. It's what's coming in. The other thing is the KN95 uses ear loops, not a head strap. And since that's been studied and it doesn't provide the kind of fit, uh, it would not in our country, it, by the United States standards, be considered a respirator. If you want to use it as a mask and you feel that you can get a good fit with it, I don't have a quarrel with it, but I will say that when you get into respirators, the fit is absolutely king. Respirators provide such tiny particle filtration, such high resistance that they must be sealed and you must be able to do some sort of a fit test. Makes sense. Thank you very much. Uh, a quick question here from one of the cool beans from, uh, from where the, the question was about Kairi uh, here. So just a quick one. So. Uh, Sandy, as you can tell now, not only we, we discuss medical concepts, we also talk about the cats that I have. So we have two cats, Luffy and Kairi. Kairi is the more quiet one. Luffy is the one that just did his round and approved or disapproved our work and went. Uh, so Kairi is sleeping somewhere. Uh, all right. So Kamran Jamil says, I read somewhere to combine two surgical masks, blue side facing each other. Is it a good idea? The last I read about this was actually recently that this was tested and the CDC is recommending do not combine two plain old surgical masks. Hmm. And what was the reason for not combining them? I think that they, one doesn't enhance the fit of the other. That, that's all I could think of. I, you know, I think this whole thing with layering, I think we're going to have to dig deeper than just saying a cotton mask over a surgical mask. I think we're gonna to have to figure out whether we're actually enhancing the fit and not disrupting the fit. The, the top one should not disrupt the fit of the bottom one. Got it. I like this uh, comment here from Earth and I wear an additional mask over my vented respirator. What do you think? Yeah. So it, that has a valve. I take it when he says vented, that he means valve. And I think that is better. That is that is better than just an open vented mask, right. correct? Got it. You know, one thing I will say about respirators that I think people ought to keep in mind is that there's also a big problem with authenticity with respirators now. There are a lot of counterfeits. Uh, just in the last week, I've known of three different news stories where whole hospital systems had received and were using counterfeit, what turned out to be counterfeit N95s. And, you know, they say, well, look for this sign or look for that number. And, you know, the people who make these counterfeit items can put those seals on those products, just like the legitimate ones can. So it, it is something to think about where you're getting it, uh, because those are hard to find these days. And the authenticity is going to be really important. Got it. So a couple of more questions, then we take a break. So one is from Denise here. 
Please explain how to spot a counterfeit N95 respirator. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons I haven't really gotten into reviewing respirators on my channel because I feel like I don't really have that much to offer with this. So like I said, there are three different hospital systems or stories that I, I had known of, read in the news where some respirators got sent back to 3M. So that means those got by the buying networks, the distributors and the hospitals. And I, I think that if they can be fooled, I'm pretty sure I could probably be fooled and you could be fooled. It's very difficult. Once, there are some things that stand out like a KN95, for example, a Chinese standard shouldn't have something like NIOSH approved on it because NIOSH is, you know, that would be an American mask. They're not going to be putting their seal on something like a Chinese product. So if you see something like that, that's really off, then that's likely counterfeit. Got it, got it. So uh, one more question, and then we, we take a break. And I hope uh, Cool Beans will not mind. I have my birthday today, so I'm just going to uh, rest a little bit. So Jody says, have you heard about antiviral masks from Israel? Uh, can we get in US also masks from Japan, supposedly better quality, where to buy good masks? Yeah, so in my continuum, I have these different kinds of masks, and one category is the high-tech textile. And I think there are a couple of them from Israel. One is, I think that she's talking about is the Synovia. And that has been tested in a few different independent labs. It hasn't gone through something like FDA testing, but in uh, several different independent labs, including on COVID. And it showed, it, it uses a zinc nanoparticle technology and it was shown to reduce the viral load by 99% in under 30 minutes. Could be five minutes, could be 10 minutes, but the test is 30 minutes. And it's a nice product in my opinion, um, but you are then, you have to think about where you're using these things. So we're talking here about like particle size filtration. I believe that Synovia is aimed at a five micron particle size. So that's like large respiratory droplets. The way, that's really the way I layer. This is, I don't layer, it's just about the numbers. I layer, like I will use a mask like this with polypropylene in it. And if I have to go to a dangerous setting, like when I went to get my vaccine, I had to go to a city hospital in an urban setting and quite crowded, I put the Synovia she's talking about over it. The Synovia is very flimsy. It isn't gonna disrupt the fit of something underneath that's more fitted and heavy. And I think there's a real place for those but you have to ask yourself, is that all you want working for you, uh, something that reduces viral load in 30 minutes, but yet doesn't filter small particle size? I think these days when it's dry and it's cold and we're thinking aerosols, you, you know, outside when you're by yourself, maybe, um, maybe not in, at the office or when you're not socially distanced. Got it. So one last question. There are many questions here, but I would like to take one more question here. Um, how would you recommend recommend sanitizing a KN95 or N95? Yeah, I've seen all different things. I, I've, I've seen, you can go to consumerlabs.com and they did a nice study on that and they subjected them to different kinds of heat, like a low oven and even some in the microwave. But the truth is there's really no good guidance on, because these are meant to be single use. And when people go to buy a respirator, and this is another one of my reasons that I've sort of stayed away from recommending respirators is because they are designed for single use and there's really no good guidance on reusing them. And then you're going to get into the hygiene issues of reuse. If it were me, I would probably have enough that I could let one sit for seven days and rotate. Got it, cool. I'm not doing that, but that's what I would do. Cool. So we, we still have a lot of uh, questions. And <laughs> is this Kylie or uh, Luffy? So Luffy is, <laughs> my wife is carrying him. All right, good. So um, I use, so one more, one more comment here. So Dean says, I use UV light for CPAP cleaner. So yeah. Is that something that can be used for masks as well? Yes, it, it can. And some people use those UV light boxes. The thing you have to be careful about is if it's not perfectly flat because it'll only sanitize exactly where the light is. So when you see any kind of a fold in the fabric, uh, you're not going to reach those areas. But yes, UVC light will work. Got it. So um, Sandy, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, once you. again, I'm going to share your... So guys, Sandy's 
Um, there is a link in the description for Sandy's uh, website, uh, YouTube channel as well. Please go check it out. Subscribe. That would be great. And um, please stay happy, safe, and blessed. Thank you very much for your birthday wishes. Sandy, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Cool. So I will see you all tomorrow. We'll continue our open forum tomorrow from last week's Twitter thread and then the live talks here. So thank you very much and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.